King is also maintaining more than a dozen empty city-owned lots and paying teens in his community to help them in hopes of getting them out of trouble. It works on their self-esteem as well as mine. They feel good about it and they're learning how to do landscape. Why is he doing this? I work for the spirit, I work for the community, I work for God because you can't fool God. He knows your heart. This will be a better world if we just can come together as one. We the people, we the people have always been in charge of this country. It is amazing. Sean Harrington, he is a high school student who noticed that there was no American flag in his classroom. Pledge of Allegiance wasn't recited. Sean fought back to put the, class, the flags back in the classroom, and he succeeded. But it's not over. He is still fighting to have the pledge recited in the classroom. Sean is here now, senior at Arlington High School in Massachusetts. I, 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 is it true that they actually said that um, you, you can't recite it because they can't find enough teachers that yeah, would recite it? One of the school committee members said that, well, maybe we'd have problems finding teachers in the schools to say the pledge. And I said, if we can't find one teacher in every school that would want to say the pledge, then we live in a broken society because then patriotism is dead. So uh, why, did you, why did you do this? Well, it was the right thing to do. Um, I didn't do it for glamour. I didn't do it for anything like that. St. Augustine said a person should be notified or honored for something... They're do for doing something they know is right. It was a righteous cause. I'm very patriotic. My, I've had relatives in almost every major war except the Spanish-American War. Um, and to me, it's just a slap in the face not to have the Pledge of Allegiance in a school. So um, how are you perceived at school? Uh, I'm the Republican. <laughs> um, I got People noticed me in school during the 2008 election where my school was proud Obama. I was the one with the McCain hat. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> right. Well, I would say um, the same thing to you with a McCain hat, but that's, <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, so now, what is the next step for you? Um, well, right now, August 3rd is the next meeting. Now, the Policy and Procedure Subcommittee of the school has, um, they were having this big debate about how are we going to have the pledge in the school. They knew they were going to have to do it because tons of people from across the country started calling the school telling them what, what a bad job they were doing. So they got frantic. Um, there were three people on that committee. Two people voted against me, one voted for me. And, the two peop and one person on the committee who's a lawyer came up with a uh, draft uh, a policy that had a lot of legal malarkey and stuff that you didn't need. And one person came up with something simple. The pledge has to be said at the beginning of every school day during school, mm -hmm. and the flag must be in every classroom. And they all voted in favor of it. So uh, even though it was said by one of the school committee members that Tea Party tactics won't work on us. It looks I, like they did. Yeah, it looks like it okay, did. Okay, so um, the, um, but you, are you going to be able to say it in the classroom, or do you have to go to um, some, like, special room to say it? No. You can hear you um, put towels at the door. <laughs> put it so no, the, Hiding the, underneath the yes, cupboard. So no, yes. <laughs> Um, my principal, Mr. Charles Skidmore, said that originally he wanted in the main lobby of the school. Oh, that uh, would make everybody feel not awkward at all. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, myself, I'm just looking. I'm like, what? You're lucky you get the kids that come to school on time, let alone five minutes. Right. But um, I was told that he caved finally, and he has finally said we'll have it on the PA system, but I haven't heard from do, him. Do you, um, did, was there ever a time that you thought this isn't worth it? Was there ever a time that you thought, where well, I'm, I'm going to lose, uh, but you just kept going? Um, one moment, kind of. Now, I'll explain it. Um, it was right after the vote, mm -hmm. and it got everywhere in my town, in Arlington, and Arlington has a very patriotic background. Uncle Sam was born in Arlington. A lot of scrimmages scrimmages during the American Revolution and I started reading you know comments by adults in the town who are supposed to be respectful and well-minded but the but the monotony moon bats for what they are oh, just part started posting oh Sean Harrington this uh, I actually got a call for my death on one of them but you know what I said you know what I'd just be letting them win if I just stop so you know what I'm just gonna make him more mad and I'm gonna continue what I'm doing good well Sean best of luck to you and and thank you for standing up for what you think is uh what you think is right and not letting people tell you. Um, well, I just don't think we could find a teacher that could recite the pledge. That's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Now, why should you never say, well, I'm just a mom?
I'll, 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 I'll introduce you to um, the person that will hopefully have you never say that line again if you're a mom. Someone who is changing what kids are learning. Next. I'm Greg Jarrett, the former chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, addressing the ethics charges against him today in his home state of New York. Congressman Charlie Rangel says he looks forward to clearing his name at a House meeting next week. The White House revising its budget deficit estimates for the fiscal year to $1.47 trillion. That's about $84 billion less than it predicted in February. It now says the government borrows 41 cents of every dollar it spends. Tropical Storm Bonnie, now a tropical depression, moving over the Gulf of Mexico, where a cap is delicately resting over the BP oil well. For more on these stories, visit foxnews.com. I'm Greg Jurek. Glenn Beck returns in a moment. First, Brett Baer, preview special report. Brett? Hey, Greg, coming up, North Korea threatens actions against the U.S. if new sanctions are imposed. Tough words as tensions are rising tonight. Plus, more Democrats are signing on to extend Bush-era tax cuts. Join me at the top of the hour for special report. Now back to Glenn. I don't even know when it was. A year, year and a half ago, I launched the 912 Project. And a lot of incredible Americans have been doing a lot of incredible things. We don't spend enough time talking about the things that Americans are doing all over this country. It's because... We're just trying to spray water on the country and trying to make the fire go out. But there's great firemen in the north, east, west, south, and the heartland. Watch. My name is Erin Talon, and I'm the organizer of the Central Illinois 912 Project. Here in Illinois, one of our foremost efforts has been our watchdogging efforts. Shorebank has been a primary area of focus for us. We found out that there was information here that had never been presented to the public before, information that needed to be presented. What we see is a bank that has as its mission the triple bottom line philosophy, which emphasizes not only profitability, but the progressive green agenda, including social justice. There has been a lot of pressure by politicians to bail out Shore Bank. This would be the first bailout of a bank by a state. This has never happened in United States history. We are staying on top of this story so that the information can be presented not only to the citizens of Illinois, but to people across the country. I'm Mimi Steele. I'm the organizer for the SFA 912 project. We have a lot of exciting projects that we're working on. Our focus is to develop a local group of people that can be involved in local politics. We're trying to develop citizens who are advocates for the founding principles of the country. I'm wearing a Reset 2010 button. The 912 member came up with this button idea. The bottom line is everyone has the same focus, which is to reset the government for 2010. A lot of people look at, uh, at California and the left coast and they think that we're lost. And I want to say don't give up on California or the left coast. I'm Jason Sager, I'm a 912er, and I'm running for Congress in the 5th Congressional District of Florida. The journey officially began when my wife and I lived in New York City. September 11th, 2001. I witnessed one of the most horrifying attacks on our nation. And though it was the worst of times in our country, the following day was one of the best of times. The 912 movement means so much to me because it brings me back to that day when we were all one people. We were brothers and sisters in liberty and fighting for a cause against one enemy. The past nine years I've been teaching about the history of our country. We started many different organizations all with the same purpose and that purpose is education. Thomas Jefferson said that only a well-informed people can be trusted with their government. And that is so true. My name 
is Elizabeth Schultz, and I am a 912er out of Watertown, New York. Here in New York, we've had about eight 912 groups gather to work for the past six months on bringing the Revalue America Tour to New York in October. It's about renewing families and self and marriage. It's about plugging into your community. It's about living the values and principles, but most importantly, the tour is about gaining the tools necessary to live responsibly and to maintain a free society. I believe that America's best days are yet to come and that I play a critical role in making that happen, but not only do I play a critical role, I have a responsibility to help make that happen. This is Mike and Tom uh, from the 912 Project in Fairbanks, Alaska, Skyping in to, to let you know, yep, there is a 912 Project in Alaska too. We have a study group that is uh, doing the 5,000 year course study. We're getting involved with the churches. The churches are letting us know that they want to take part in this. A lot of church groups here want to bring God back into society. Our job is to teach people and present the Constitution so that they can go out and present it to other groups too.